This team stinks. You're watching Philadelphia Eagles now. Let's talk about this Birds team that is absolutely free-falling going into the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. Losers of five of six, and against a Giants team that historically they've been able to dominate in recent memory, they were on the other end of that. And they got dominated by a bad New York team that's one of the worst teams in the National Football League when Philadelphia going into this late afternoon slot actually had something to play for. I'm Chase Sr. Appreciate all of you for watching, and this can serve as a little bit of a therapy session for you. If this show looks and sounds a little bit differently, Chat Sports is in Houston for the national championship between Michigan and Washington in the college football playoff. Been doing a couple of shows and some coverage over the last couple of days, so just wanted to set the foundation there. Either way, let's talk about this Birds team here. Lost 27 to 10 to the New York Giants, and some of you out there who still believe in the Eagles might try to tell me, Chase, this game didn't mean anything for Philadelphia. They didn't play a lot of their starters. They knew that the Cowboys were going to win against the Commanders and lock up the NFC East, and there was no incentive to try to win this game. False. This Eagles team badly needed to get back on track. They needed to show us something. They needed some form of positive momentum going into this game, and they showed us not a thing. Jordan Mailata said, the vibes have been really good this week. I really think we're going to go out there and really going to put it all together. Eagles didn't do that. And in fact, they have me feeling worse than I actually was feeling about this team going into this Giants matchup. Philadelphia Eagles were flat once again. They look poorly coached once again, and it clearly looks like the message from this coaching staff led by Nick Sirianni is not getting through to the players. The Eagles were down 24-0 at halftime, and much of that came when the Eagles were playing a lot of their ones. This move from Sean Desai to Matt Patricia it's been an unmitigated disaster. The defense has actually gotten worse. This offense is flatlined. They have no offensive creativity. And now it's to the point where they struggle to simply move the football. No Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Darius Slay, Fletcher Cox. I don't care. Can this Eagles team show me that they actually have a pulse? Because in this game against the Giants, they didn't have a heartbeat. They had something to play for with the Commanders coming out flat against, or with the Cowboys coming out flat against the Commanders and the Eagles, they just flat out sucked and no-showed. They could not do anything offensively and everything seems to be hard for this team. Defensively can't get a stop. Defensively can't get off the field on third downs. Defensively, they can't do anything positive of note in the red zone. And then offensively, they don't stick to with the ground game. They can't air it out. Jalen Hurts has seemed as though he's lost his confidence for a player who is always cool, calm, and collected. And A.J. Brown, think about this, had to hold a players-only meeting. And he had to relate to the team. According to Fox Sports NFL insider Jay Glazer, we have to trust our coaches. We have to trust what they're telling us and the play calls that they are calling. Well, clearly, there's no confidence in this coaching staff because if that is what needs to be said for an 11-win football team going into the final week of the regular season, that's just not a good sign. This team is falling apart. They've lost five of six, and they are reeling going into the playoffs. And they haven't instilled any confidence in me. They haven't instilled any confidence in you. And do you have any confidence that this Eagles team is going to go on the road and beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the wild card round? And that is the question that I want to pose for all of you right now. Will the Eagles beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? This will be the pinned comment for today's show. So we want to hear from you. W for win, L for lose. Sound off with what you think down below in the comment section right now. You look at the NFC playoff picture, and in turn, you look at the Eagles' playoff path. They fall to the five seed. Could have taken, taken care of business against the Cardinals last week. Remember when we were saying, oh, you beat the Giants, you have the Cardinals and the Giants remaining, you can easily go 3-0 and to round out the regular season. What did the Eagles do? They gave up more than 200 rushing yards to Arizona, 
lost. And then they lost the regular season finale to New York. And now Philadelphia, most likely, if they have any hopes of making a deep playoff run, are going to have to go on the road three consecutive games to try to get back to the Super Bowl. And we're really talking about a Super Bowl appearance for this Eagles team with how they've looked with a large sample size. I just simply do not see how it's going to happen. And look, I've been rooting on this football team since I was four years old. When they lose, my week sucks. When they win, my week is great. I still haven't watched the full highlight of that Super Bowl loss last year because my heart can't take it. But let's be real about this team right now. When have you ever seen a team lose five of six and be able to put it together for a playoff run? San Francisco 49ers are clearly better. The Dallas Cowboys in that two spot are clearly better. The Detroit Lions have a lot of momentum right now. The Buccaneers are that four spot by way of winning a bad division. But even a Rams team has won 7 of 8. Even the Green Bay Packers are playing better football right now than the Philadelphia Eagles. And right now the Birds look like a team that is just lost, that is broken, that has no confidence. And you shift to the NFL playoffs and the outlook for this team looks extremely bleak. Still to come on the show, has Nick Sirianni lost the locker room? He was asked about that after the game. And we have some pressing Eagles injury news on Jalen Hurts as well as A.J. Brown. But first, let's tell you about our sponsor, Factor Meals. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so that you're ready for 2024. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning, and it sets you up for success here in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, the prep work, and the cooking fatigue Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered straight to your door with over 35 meals to choose from every week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan plus, and veggie, and more. Plus, over 55 weekly add ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Forget the frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. Factors two minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up fast with restaurants quality meals all delivered straight to your door look we're in houston we've been grinding providing coverage for chat sports for the national championship between washington and michigan but i'm still getting my runs in every day and i'm still having to maintain my healthy diet so that i can continue to keep my run streak going of beating my previous run streak of 300 plus days. And as, I, as I've been traveling so much, as I've been working so much, you know it's really convenient? Being able to pop in a factor meal for two, three minutes in the microwave and being able to take these on the go and eat them on the go as well. Here's the deal. It's a great deal for all of you who are trying to get quality food with some veggie meals, protein plus, and all of the other options that are very tasty, but also save money and save time. 50% off using the code EaglesChat50 at factormeals.com slash EaglesChat50. We really care about you and your health, so we're going to put that link down below in the comment section as well as in the description of this video. Let's talk about Nick Sirianni here. I've been a staunch defender of the Philadelphia Eagles head coach. Here's what he said when he was asked if he lost the Eagles locker room. Quote, we have a lot of belief in that locker room. There are a lot of teams that want to be in our position in making the playoffs. I know what I felt in that locker room. We have a lot of belief in there. None of us are quitters. You can stay down or you can get the F up. We know how to get up. The Eagles team hasn't really faced a lot of adversity, though. And anytime they faced adversity this year, which has been a rarity in the Nick Sirianni regime outside of that slow start in his rookie campaign when there were no expectations for this team during a rebuilding year. Look, what has this Eagles team done to really prove to us that they can turn it around? What has this Eagles team done when they faced adversity? Anytime they faced adversity this year, They've continued to not respond, and that's why I'm really concerned about this football team right here. The message from Sirianni to his players, to the locker room, seems to not be getting through. And it can be a problem with your coordinators and Brian Johnson, as well as Sean Desai and Matt Patricia. Nick Sirianni made those hires. He's the one who decided to move off of Desai and go toward Patricia. This is also Nick Sirianni's offense, though. And they're 32nd in pre-snap motion, no creativity. When teams stack the box and they blitz Jalen Hurts, he has the lowest EPA 
among all quarterbacks in the NFL when facing a blitz because there's no hot route, there's no answer, he's not making the necessary checks. The Eagles aren't trying to put their playmakers in a position to succeed by running pre-snap motion, and this really seems to be a high school offense, and the league is caught up to this high school offense. And that's why, really, over the last month and a half, Everything has seemed so arduous. And this is why Philadelphia has not been able to move the football consistently. On top of that, bad penalties, bad communication. We saw another false start when Marcus Mariota was in the game and a delay a game when Marcus Mariota was in the game because the Eagles failed to get the play call in. And these lack of communication details are a problem, and that falls on the head coach. And when you lose 5 of 6 after starting 10-1, Who's to blame? And I can only imagine what Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie are thinking here. This is a very aggressive organization, and it's worked out well for them, right? Because the Eagles, since the turn of this century, have been one of the most successful teams in the NFL. They've been to seven NFC Championship games. They've been to three Super Bowls. They've won one. They've won a lot. And since 2000, they're second in the NFL for the most playoff wins behind the dynastic New England Patriots. They are aggressive as an organization, and now you have to wonder, are they going to get aggressive at head coach here? Are they going to try to make a change this offseason? Because any answer that Nick Sirianni has tried to come about with, and any answer that Nick Sirianni has tried to find, anything that he's tried to say to turn this Eagles team around, he hasn't been able to come up with that answer. And you have to wonder if the league is caught up to this offense, which Nick Sirianni's fingerprints are all over, and you have to wonder what Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman are thinking about the future of the Philadelphia Eagles head coach. I have been a defender of Sirianni, and I have said he's won so much with this team. And I don't think that the Eagles should panic him and fire him, but this is the most that I'm ever questioning Nick Sirianni because the team is not responding to him right now. So with that, I ask you this. Do you believe in Nick Sirianni? Why for yes and for no? And going back to that point that I just made, this is the most that I'm ever questioning Sirianni. This is a bad coaching staff. This is a team that has no synergy. It has no camaraderie. Anytime you're calling a players only meeting, that's always a concern. And usually Super Bowl hangovers start at the start of the year. Now it's coming about at the end of the year, at the worst possible time. Nick Sirianni can say, I have all the confidence in this football team, but nobody has confidence in you. Now let's Round out the show with this. Some injury news on A.J. Brown as well as Jalen Hurts. I also have some thoughts on Eagles Buccaneers. Jalen Hurts hit his hand on a defender on a follow-through as he was making a throw. And producer Jack, let's show this picture here. This right here looks like a dislocated finger. How do you say that it's not, right? It looks like an ugly injury. Hertz actually came back into the game after a couple of warm-up throws with his finger taped and his hand taped. But for a quarterback on his throwing hand, this is a little bit of a concern going up against a Buccaneers defense that we're about to preview and talk about. That's a pretty solid unit. And if he is hindered at any way, in throwing the football, that adds to the growing concerns with this Eagles offense. The play designs are bad. The play calling is bad. The execution is not there. And if your quarterback is limited in throwing the football, that's not good either. Hurt said, quote, I'm taking it day by day, and also said he does not want to talk about injuries. Mike Garofolo, NFL Network, also added this on Twitter that Jalen Hurt says he's never experienced anything like his finger injury today. Asked what happened. He said, I popped it out, or it popped out rather. Said he's just going to take it day by day. That's a little bit of a concern for your starting quarterback who you're paying big time dollars to and you're expecting to play elite football, which he did a lot last year. That's why he was the NFL MVP runner up. But over the last month and a half during this Eagle skid, he's been anything but elite. As for A.J. Brown, scary moment, kind of got taken down on a hip drop tackle. He fumbled the football, was down on the worst surface in the NFL, by the way, at MetLife Stadium because that turf surface is a joke and seemed to be in a lot of pain. Limped off the field, went to the locker room in the first quarter, did not return. He was not in crutches or a knee brace or anything after the game. Did have a knee sleeve on. So that's a good sign for next week, I guess. But made sure to wait and greet his teammates entering the locker room. According to Ian Rappaport, the ACL is intact. And he also said, Rappaport did, that it appears as though A.J. Brown is going to be fine. But you're without Devontae Smith in this game. 
A.J. Brown goes down, and Hurts is having to throw to the likes of a cooked Julio Jones, a bad Quez Watkins, and a backup in Alameda Zacchaeus. It was so bad that Marcus Mariota came into the game, and he was throwing to Britton Covey. As for this Eagles-Buccaneers game, let's do a little bit of a preview, and then tomorrow we'll do a full-blown preview right here on Eagles now. Be on the lookout for that. Eagles have lost 5 of 6. The offense is flat, and it's out of sorts. You're telling me that Philadelphia is just going to flip a switch and win on talent alone? That's not how football works. Football takes synergy. Football takes all 11 men doing their job. All 11 guys aren't doing their job for Philadelphia. And for this Buccaneers team, I think that Baker Mayfield has been slinging the football. He's played pretty good ball over the last like month and change. And you think about the biggest problem with this Eagles team, and there are a lot of them. Offense is one of them. It's the secondary. And they're awful on that back end. Buccaneers are loaded at wide receiver. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. And then you look at this Buccaneers defense here. Todd Bowles is the defensive head coach and a really good defensive mind in this league. And you have this defense going up against this spiraling offense. And Philadelphia is going up against a Buccaneers team that's number nine in points per game, number 25 in yards per game. So you can move the football against them. Number eight in points per play, number 27 in third down conversion rate, but fourth on fourth down conversion percentage, fourth in the red zone. So they're giving up a lot of yards, but they're not giving up a lot of touchdowns and number nine in touchdowns per game. So the Eagles... They can't capitalize on some of these drives. They've been able to move the football, but then they turn the football over, and this Buccaneers team does a great job of limiting points. So that's a little bit of a concern for me. You could talk about that week three game on Monday Night Football when the Eagles went down there and they played okay ball against Tampa Bay, but this is a different Eagles team since then, and it's a different Buccaneers team going back to that point as well. Eagles fans might be able to take over Tampa, we love an underdog story. I just don't see it with this team. Also, more bad news for the Seagull secondary. They have had so many different lineup changes at safety, at linebacker, and in the secondary. More bad news here, and this is breaking news just coming in. According to Mike Garofolo, NFL Network once again, Sidney Brown suffered what's believed to be a torn ACL today against the Giants. He'll undergo testing tomorrow to confirm rough end to a promising rookie season that included a 99-yard pick six last week. So you're already light at safety, and now you're going to be even lighter at that safety spot with Sidney Brown going down with that torn ACL. And I thought it was a pretty good rookie season for him. And I do want to pass along just some thoughts on Sidney Brown just because of the severity of this injury. You look at his pro football focus grades. They weren't great because he overpursued at times. He was a little bit overaggressive and he missed a lot of tackles. Overall grade of 62. Run defense grade of 56.5. Pass rush grade of 49.9. A coverage grade of 64.8. So that's actually pretty solid almost in the green there. A lot of passer rating when targeted of 113. Five missed tackles, uh, but had 11 stops and was a player who brought physicality to this team, who wasn't afraid to lay the boom. And again, you're down Justin Evans. You're down at that safety spot dramatically, especially from last year when you had a player like C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And Reed Blankenship is already a limited player, and now you're down yet another player on this back end. I just don't see sustainably how Philadelphia is going to be able to make a deep run in the playoffs. You address that safety position and bring in Kevin Byard, but he's a little bit old and past his prime. So who you got in this wild card matchup, PHI for the Eagles, TB for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Am I just being overly negative? If that's the case, let me know and tell me that I'm wrong. But let me know in the chat right now and appreciate all of you for watching. Thank you.